Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. Today we are painting a new 3D printed character and trying a new method of painting called Grisaille. To get into the holiday spirit, today's model is the Dwarven Santa by Epics and Stuff. This is a great mini with some fun details. So let's talk about Grisaille. Grisaille is a method of underpainting that uses shades of grays or other neutral muted colors, like burnt umber. It focuses on monotone colors and value painting. Grizz itself means gray, so if you go the brown route, you would call it brune. But to keep things simple, we will call it all grisé. This painting technique, since the 1300s, was popular by many Renaissance painters, and is still used today. There are a ton of great videos and tutorials on how to use this for oil paintings, so check those out. A lot of what I find is artists painting sculptures, and they use this method to properly define the lights and the darks of the pieces. If you watched my previous video, you know I tried to utilize a no-tan study. No-tan studies in a way are similar to this method of allowing the artist to understand the composition of a piece, specifically lights and dark colors. But rather than simplifying the lights and darks, like no-tan, we will use the full shades and transitions. This gives us a different look, less block coloring, and more shades. Like I said before, Grisaille is a concept of painting shadows and highlights only using one value scale. The purpose of this is to get the shadowing correct, and then later we can apply colors to make it more vibrant. It's up to you if you want to use blacks or browns, but today I will use the browns. Grisaille has different layers, open and closed. Open only uses burnt umber that thins down fairly transparent. Primarily this allows us to paint the shadow regions to get the correct dark tones in the painting. This keeps the value range of the colors to a very small scale. It's only a one to one ratio of lights to shadows, or we can call it a one color shadow. Closed Grisaille uses opaque colors to give us a wider range of color values. This is where we mix whites into the burnt umber and create a full range of shades. Now this is up to you how many values you want to use, but I plan to use around three. Before we start to paint using Grisaille, we first need to start with a white mini. Then I apply light to the mini to decide where I want my lights and darks. This time I decide to use a form light where I use a three quarter top and a three quarter front lighting. This means that there is one quarter of shadows, mainly in the back. For this I use two light sources and get it in the position that gives the most decent shadow effect. I take pictures all around my mini just for reference. This will help us when we have to paint the mini. What makes this interesting for minis is that instead of transposing a 3D thing to a 2D surface, I go back to my 3D model and paint that utilizing the 2D reference. Now we are ready to paint the mini. When you use Grisaille, you should use a lighter value than what is revealed from the light in the picture. Also, you can use a value scale to help you pick what shades of colors you need. I first start with my open Grisaille, taking a transparent burnt umber and applying it to all the shadows I see. This is strictly to one-on-one -on -one shadows to the highlights, so I don't think too hard about it. Here is what it looks like so far. You can see a basic shadowing of the entire mini with the white and the dark umber. It's fairly simple and pretty straightforward. Now to the closed Grisaille method. This is where I do various shades of the burnt umber. I take the same color I was using and mix in white. I try to make around three different shades and gradually transition each of the darker shadows I laid earlier. Now with the mini there's a lot of shapes and intersections of shapes. There are cast shadows and transitions. A cast shadow gives a hard edge to a shape, while a transitional edge is more softer and requires us to blend in between. A simple way to blend our transition shapes is simply blend one color into the other, or a slight pull. I like to start from the dark colors and work my way up to the lighter colors. I start to stop looking at my reference photo too and just use the shadows I have laid down already. I take my time and try to get most of the areas done. And here is our finished Grisaille Mini. You can see a lot of transitions between areas and my attempts to blend things in. It's a tad messy, but it gives a cool effect. We have a brown and white Mini and it looks good, but we want color. Now we go into our glazing. This step may require a bit more practice to get right. What we want to do is lay down super thin layers or paint, and the tricky part is in making sure we layer the right amount in certain areas. But that's where your inner artist comes out. For this I use a glazed medium. You can use water as well, but I find that glazed mediums always make a more consistent, smoother glaze compared to water. Basically you take your glazed medium and do a 50-50 with a paint to thin it out. You take your glaze colors and go over everything we've done, adding a thin layer on top. The idea is to apply a color to certain areas to give it our various hues. You can make this very straightforward or you can mix different shades of colors to give unique transitions. A 
comes down to what you want it to look like and what colors you're going for. For example, the red on this mini is pretty straightforward. I'll stay in the red slash orange range of colors. However, say I was painting a dragon with iridescent scales. You could use green and blue and yellow for example. Or another great example is a light source. Say I had a blue light shining on one side of the model. You can use a blue glaze and transition that into other colors. This gives you a ton of flexibility. I just make my way applying different types of glazes on certain spots. This may seem pretty basic with the colors that I picked, so it's a good test for using Grisai. To finish up the mini, I added a little iridescent pigments, and a little wash of certain areas. And the last part, I make a shiny base. Why not? So this mini is done, and it looks pretty decent. I didn't do the comic book lining this time, but I still like it. Let's do a review of the Grisai method. Let's first look at the things that I liked. First, I think it's a neat concept that allows you to distinctly define your shadows and highlights. Two, it's a widely used method with a lot of free information out there. You can find tons of videos and articles about it. Three, you do everything up front and allows more freedoms with your colors. With glazes, you can mix and match colors better with better transitions overall. And lastly, you really can produce better transitions between shades. This is very impressive. Now to the things I didn't like. This is not really designed for minis, and we knew this to start. We just need to find a better way to apply this method. Next, this is not that great for small details. There are so many small details and many of them get hidden, especially when you do your grisaille colors. Next, you constantly have to make glazes. It just takes time and you gotta make sure you mix everything properly for every color. Plus, some colors just make better glazes than others. Next, glazes don't always go on smooth, and sometimes they look spotty. That's just the nature of glazes in general, so you really have to make it thin coats. And lastly, there's always additional time taking photos and staying up lighting. It helps in the long run, but just adds more things to the list of things to do. So the overall verdict, it was good, it was decent. I don't know if I was totally sold on this concept yet, but I think it needs some work to be properly used with minis. I think the biggest drawback that would keep me away from this is it hides details from you when you paint. But overall, it does have potential. Compared to a no tan study, I would say no tan study wins for now. But it was a very different style of painting. So in the end, it's hard to compare the two. Here's a grisaille next to the no tan study I did before. So what do you think? Do you think this method is worth trying again? I think after doing it this one time, I know ways I can make this better. I'll experiment some more and let you know. Thank you for watching and please leave some comments. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you to all my patrons and supporters as well. See you next time.